Hey guys, it's the plant doctor. We've got a big problem here in Alabama over the past week or two. North Alabama, Central Alabama. I've talked to regional extension agents. I've talked to landscape owners, landscape company owners. I've talked to FFA advisors. I've talked to farmers. We have army worms and lots and lots of army worms. They're everywhere. I uh, recently had them in my yard. I'm going to show you today, one, how to find them, and two, how we're going to treat for them. Uh, I'm going to give you multiple ways to treat for army worm, uh, but probably the most important for the homeowner are those pet and kid safe options that we have available to us. So let's go and take a look. So how do we find army worm? There's a couple different ways you can go about it. You can just do a visual inspection, in particular real late in the evening. So right now uh, it's August the 25th, it's 7.15 in the evening. If I was going to do a, a scout for army worms, now would be the time that I go out and I start looking for little caterpillars in the grass. They'll be an inch and a half or so long and then they'll have some parallel stripes going down their back. Another way that you can look for them is take some uh, dishwashing soap, liquid dishwashing soap like Dawn, mix it up in some water, and spray it on your yard. What I did was I took my miracle Grow container that goes on the end of my hose, I put some soapy water in it, and I started to wet the yard. That will make the army worms come up to the top of the grass and you'll be able to see them a whole lot better. So you can do a, just a visual inspection late in the evening, walk around, you'll be able to see them. Uh, if it's uh, earlier in the day, they may not be as active. So uh, mixing up some Dawn dishwashing detergent uh, with uh, some water that will irritate them and they'll come up to the surface of the grass and you'll be able to see them that way. Once we get them up, what are we going to do? Well, we need to treat for them because what's going to happen is they will destroy your lawn. Like, literally overnight, they can eat your entire lawn. Now, if they get your lawn, I want to be abundantly clear here, it's going to look bad for about a month but it does not kill the grass all the way to the root. Uh, so that grass will come back from the roots and it will fill back in. So if you've already had a, an army worm infestation and your grass is brown as can be, don't panic, it'll come back. But how do we treat for them? Let's say that we've caught them in time, we see the army worms there. How do we treat for army worms? There's a lot of different products on the market and what I really want you to be focused on here, and this is where I've got somewhat of an issue with the, the chemical industry. They put the chemicals in, in big fancy bags at the garden centers that have all these colors and, and, and verbiage on it that it's not misleading, but it, it's just marketing and, and somebody that has uh, a couple of advanced degrees and has a plant background going back to their teens. Um, what you really need to be focused on is the guaranteed analysis. So at the bottom of the bag or the back of the bag, there'll be something that says guaranteed analysis. And what you're after is the chemical in that product. That's the only thing that matters. They can put all the fancy verbiage and bright colors on the bag. Uh, they can uh, make some claims on that bag that, that have to be true um, but true but also misleading uh, I like to use the example I was in Publix the other day and uh, they had some potatoes uh, for sale and it said gluten free well yes gluten free of course it is it's a potato Gluten's a protein in wheat. Why would a wheat protein be in the potato? It, it's just kind of misleading and sometimes the verbiage on the insecticide bags can be the same way. Uh, but I want you to focus on the guaranteed analysis. Let's talk about the chemicals that we can use. The first chemical, the one 
uh, that's going to be pet and animal safe. They're all safe, but this one's up there at the top in terms of uh, toxicity. It is going to be uh, paramethrin. All right, so paramethrin, let's talk about paramethrin for a minute. It is what is used in flea collars. It's used, or uh, tick collars, it's used in flea baths. And if your child has ever come home with head lice, it is the active ingredient in uh, products like NYX uh, shampoo for head lice, okay? Uh, so uh, paramethrin, you can spray that on the yard and then let it dry, you know, just let it sit overnight. And then the next day, no big deal. Um, let the kids go play, let the, the dog out, let the cats out. That's probably the safest option that we have is permethrin. Uh, probably the most popular, it is safe, uh, but you don't see this product used in those um, animal products or human products, it is bifenthrin. So bifenthrin works extremely well, extremely well on army worms. All right, so paramethrin, bifenthrin, and then I had to write the other one down, uh, gamma lothrin. Oh, excuse me, gamma silothrin. So gamma silothrin is the active ingredient in triazazide. So triazazide is a product, I believe, made by Bayer. You can buy it at Lowe's, and it comes in two forms. This is a good option for people that don't have uh, a backpack sprayer, don't have a boom sprayer. Um, if you've got a, a broadcast spreader that you throw out fertilizer with, this comes in a granular form. There's a liquid form, but they also make granulars for it that you can pick up at any garden center anywhere. Uh, so that product is another good product to use. Um, another product, it is a systemic insecticide. Uh, systemic meaning that it's going to be absorbed by the plant through the roots is a matocloprid. A matocloper is pretty good. I've used it before on some azaleas. So sometimes my azaleas in the backyard here, uh, they'll get aphids on them really bad. And so what I'll do is after they flower, because I don't want that matocloper in the flower and the bees get in there. Um, after they flower, I'll put down some matocloper and it keeps the aphids off of them. It'll also keep your grub worms at bay. It'll keep those army worms at bay. Uh, so a matocloper is another good option that you can put out. Um, something that I've figured out indirectly is a product called Fipronil. So Fipronil is actually what we use around houses for uh, termite barriers. Uh, Fipronil is also, I believe, found in some uh, tick collars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it's a pretty safe product. And so if you look at the label, Fipronil is not technically rated for armyworm. Like you look at the list of insects that it treats, armyworm's not on there. I, I'll share this with you. I took a little 10 by 10 plot in my backyard. I sprayed some Fipronil over it. It got the armyworms. Uh, so yeah, I'm a big proponent of reading your labels and, and mixing and, and your chemicals according to the directions and putting those down at the appropriate rates for the appropriate um, thing that you're trying to do, whether that's fertilizers or herbicides or insecticides. Uh, but if you have some fipronil, it's, it, I believe it's already rated for what they call cutworms. Uh, it's, I believe it's already rated for what they call grub worms. So it works on the army worms as well. Uh, so we got bifenthrin, paramethrin, that's my recommendation if you've got dogs and cats and things like that. Uh, gamma silothrin, uh, amatocloprid, and fipronil are the, the five chemicals that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I hope this helps you with uh, getting rid of those army worms because they're, they're bad this year. It's been the perfect storm for them here in August. We've had a ton of rain and the army worms have just taken out off. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Until next time, this is a plant doctor.